Century posters were the main form of media. When the number of volunteers began to dwindle, Lord Kitchener led a major push to encourage men to enlist. He used different images to play on the emotions of British men, which boosted the number of men signing up to join the war effort. Some would aim to stir their patriotic spirit or appeal to their sense of manliness, whilst others would try to guilt men into taking up arms. Media that tries to convince you to agree with the government is called propaganda. Lord Kitchener's propaganda was so effective that there was not enough equipment for all the men that joined. We wondered if we could create our own posters and convince people to join the army. Hey you, would you join the army after reading these? Maybe. Maybe? Well, it looks dangerous. Men up and down the country felt compelled to do their duty and went to the nearest recruitment centre in droves. Some were allowed to join up in regiments with their fellow volunteers from their local area. This helped convince small men to go to war. The opportunity to go and win the war with your mates seemed too much like fun. What they hoped for was glory, but what they encountered was not what had been promoted in the images they had seen. War will be fun, won't it? You bet! Let's go get the bad guys together! Yeah! With the Great War came a new type of fighting. Trenches were dug by either side as a base for soldiers in order to hold their territory. But the conditions were atrocious. Damp and squalid, soldiers were as likely to perish from illness as they were from the fighting. It was not helped by the time soldiers were having to spend away from their family and friends. I can't wait to get home. We should have a party. We can invite the whole street. I've been writing a book. I've called it War at the Very Worst. I think I might have it published and open up a shop and all the family is going to work there. Oh, I almost forgot. Thanks for the rock biscuits and the lovely chocolate bar. This put a smile on my face momentarily. Before it's my turn to be on the front line. If you don't hear off me, you know what's happened. Your dear son, Henry. Hmm, has anybody seen my gum? Dear Mother, how are you? It was a pleasure hearing from you in this lovely letter. How long has it been since I left France? Blimey, it feels like forever. Life here is much more appalling than back at home. The officers here are very downhearted and miserable. I suppose you'll think that though. I am encased in devastation. An abundance of events have occurred since I last seen you. I am really thankful for this letter and also for your courage and support. Without it, I don't think I'll be able to survive here. It was no doom and gloom in the trenches, however. Men use humour to try and make the best of their situation. Men would talk as they removed lysics from their uniforms, known as chats. Ugh! This is where the slang term chatting comes from. Oi! Quit chatting and get on with it! Yes, yes sir! sir! 
Blimey, army officers are bossy. And here's a gross fact for you. Although gas masks were provided, if you could not reach yours or there was not enough to go round, you might have to use a cloth with urine on it. Ah, Not nice. But the ammonia would help prevent the gas from penetrating. Probably worth putting up with the smell to save your life. Is it? Could it be? It can't be. It's sure me. During World War I, there was lots of poetry written, which expressed how people felt about the war. Poetry allows people to express their feelings about a subject in an artistic way. We felt so moved by the devastation of World War I that we wrote our own poems to express how we felt about it. Muddy, damp, life in the trench. Dead bodies surrounded, I smell the stench. Abandoned and silent, no man's land. Life and death go hand in hand. Bullets speeding past my head. I'm tired, I'm cold, I need my bed. Hunger pains, twist and turn. Pain in my heart for my family burns. My life in this trench is lonely and cold. My wife, my children, long to hold. How in the world am I alive? My short life has just flashed before my eyes. Although the men are bravely fighting, most of my comrades are sadly dying. Bang, bang, the sound of gunshot. Men are falling like dead leaves in autumn. The stars shining like the polished floor. It ends in sleep that is sweeter than life. Despite the pain we fought in the rain, the soldiers stood like dark trees, bending as whispering secrets. The blood looked like a velvet cloth thrown on the floor. They stumbled, they crumbled. In their mind, they were blind, as the bullets went through them, as if they were a ghost. Bang, crack, these are the sounds of war. Rifles stand to attention, blowing away the gory Germans. The trench was our prison. Dolce et decorum, est pro patria more is what they say. What a lie. There is no sweetness. There is no happiness. Only the sadness and despair. Boom. The sound of war. My last moment of life was spent in the music of war. Reading my mum's letter killed me. I gasp. Nothing is left. Though there was a second world war, the impact of the first should not be forgotten. The introduction of modern warfare was brutal and costly with over 38 million people being wounded or killed as a result. This is why every year on November the 11th, we have a minute silence. We will remember them. They were storm on the from the hillside. They were called in from the glen. And the country found them ready at the starting call for men. Let no tears add to their hardships as the soldiers.